In this video, we're going over how to create an infinite zoom using AI generated images with DALI and animation techniques inside of After Effects. Make sure to join our Patreon where you can get a ton of perks, including a private VFX masterminds chat where you can talk to other VFX artists. Link will be in the description below. To get started, we first need to generate a base image with Dolly that we can then base each next frame on. For our zoom, we wanted to begin in a puddle of water on a dirt road and then gradually zoom out into outer space. And then from there, who even knows? First, we need to type in a prompt. So we can say something like a puddle of water on dirt, top down view, photorealistic, and then hit generate. Dolly will generate four images for us to pick from. This one looks good, so let's go ahead and hit accept and download and then let's name it 001 for frame one. Next, we need to scale the image down so that we have some space around the picture. The way Dolly works is you can erase certain parts of an image and the AI will add on to those empty spaces based on the prompt that you give it. Or similarly, in our case, scale the image down and it will add on to the outer perimeter of the image. Open your image in Photoshop or a similar photo editing program. For this, I'm using Affinity Photo because I'm too poor to pay monthly for anything more than just After Effects. Next, zoom in with the Marquee tool and make a selection around the Dolly watermark and use Content Aware Fill to remove it. Then hit export and replace the image now without the watermark. Then let's rescale the image down to 30% of its original size. In this case, 30% of 1024 pixels is 307.2. So we'll type in 307.2 for the height and width and then hit enter. Export again and then this time naming it 001 underscore resized. Then we'll jump back over to Dolly and upload the newly resized image and add the next prompt. This time let's say a dirt road, top down view, photorealistic and hit generate. Repeat the process once again of saving as 002 this time for frame two, removing the watermark, exporting and replacing and rescaling down to 30%. Then just keep repeating the process again and again, adding on whatever prompt you wish for each next frame until you have as many frames as you want. Once you've completed your frame generating, hop into After Effects and import all the full sized frames. For our project, we generated 25 frames, but you may have more or less, which is fine. Grab frame 001 and drag it down to the create new composition button. Go to composition settings and name the composition frames 1 through 10 and set the duration to 10 seconds. Click OK and then drag frames 2 through 10 down into the composition. Repeat the process for frames 11 through 20 into their own comp with the same 10 second duration and again for any other frames you might have. Now jump back into the frames 1 through 10 comp and select the first frame. Hit S on the keyboard for scale and change the size to 30% to match our reset that we did for each image. Parent the first frame to the second frame so that when the second frame resizes, the first frame is linked and scales with it. Now we can see that there is a hard edge outline of the first frame against the second. With the first frame selected, grab the rectangle tool and draw a mask inside the boundaries of the image to blend it better with the second image. Once you've done that, simply repeat the same process for each next frame, selecting frame two, rescaling down to 30%, parenting to frame three, drawing a mask inside the edge boundary, and so on. Do the same process in each of the other comps as well until until you've completed the last frame. Once that's all done, go back to the frame one through 10 comp and select the last frame. Next, we'll move the playhead to the end of the timeline and add a keyframe for scale at 30%. Then we'll move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline. Since all of these layers are parented to each other in sequence, we need to zoom all the way in to the first frame. Now, the reason we broke the frames up into separate comps of 10 is because the scaling value we need to zoom in that far would be way too large for After Effects to be able to handle. To figure out the exact value we need to scale up to, we need to do a little bit of math. The equation we need to use is 1 divided by 0.3 to the power of n times 100, where 1 divided by 0.3 means we're scaling each image down to 30% and then raising that to the power of however many frames we have in our comp. In this case, 11 frames because we have 10 in the comp and then we need to add an extra for it to blend well with the following comp and then multiplying the whole thing by 100 since we're working in percentages. Now, don't worry if you're bad at math. I am too and I admittedly didn't figure this one out on my own, but I figured I'd at least show you how we're coming up with this value instead of just giving you some random large number that you have no clue where it came from. When we run the calculation, we come up with a value of 56,450,292.694767. So we can now see why we needed to break these comps up into chunks of 10, because otherwise that number would just totally break after effects. So with the playhead at the beginning of the timeline, change the scaling of the last layer to 56,450,292.694 and add another keyframe. Now when we 
you play it back, we'll notice that the animation starts very slowly and only at the very end does it speed up and that's way too fast. We want this to play back in a linear fashion. So to do that, select both keyframes, right click and go to keyframe assistant and select exponential scale. Now the sequence will play back linearly. Now just repeat the process on the last layer of all the other comps. And once that's all complete, create a new comp, entitle it layers and change the duration to match the total length of all your comps. In this case, we have three comps at 10 seconds each, so we'll make it 30 seconds. Then select and drag your three comps into the new layers comp. Next, we need to line each sequence up with the ends of each previous sequence, so drag the playhead towards the end of the first layer, and then drag the beginning of the second layer toward the end of the first. Lower the opacity of the first layer so you can see the second, and then drag the second until the two match up perfectly. Set the opacity of the first back to 100, then repeat the process for the next layer. After that's done, drag the layers comp into a new comp and name it trim. Drag the playhead to the point where you want the animation to begin and hit B on the keyboard, then drag the playhead to the point you want the animation to finish and hit N on the keyboard. Go up to composition and select trim comp to work area. Then finally, to cap things off, turn on motion blur for all layers and render out the animation.